So in this video we're going to carry on with uh, transpiration and look at how it's measured. Uh, the instrument that's used to measure transpiration rate uh, is called a potometer, which you can see there. Uh, what is it made of? It's basically a capillary tube there uh, filled with water with uh, an air bubble in there. Uh, on the other end you have a reservoir with uh, excess water in with a tap there that uh, uh, is turned off when you're using it and right on the end you've got your cut shoot uh, that's been inserted in there. So uh, the other thing is uh, a scale there and uh, that's um, uh, a length scale normally in centimetres or uh, millimetres. So that's the uh, diagram of a potometer. Here. Are two pictures of uh, real potometers. Uh, similar to the ones we use in the college. Uh, the syringe there is the reservoir. There's your uh, scale there, your centimetres uh, scale. There's the capillary tube that will have the bubble in it. Uh, this one here, same setup, except it has the cut shoot in uh, the end there. So these are uh, real potometers. And uh, you need to be able to uh, set one up and uh, explain how you set one up. Uh, so uh, we'll look at that now. So uh, here's a picture, the best I could find, uh, that shows uh, to set up a potometer you need to do it all under water. Okay, uh, here is the points that you need to know about setting it up. All right, so everything under water. You need to cut your chute under water as well. That prevents any air bubbles getting into the xylem vessels. Okay, you need to insert the um, cut chute into the potometer under water. And then once you've done that, you need to seal all the joints here uh, where the cut chute goes in, where the reservoir is. You need to seal all that with something like Vaseline or grease. Um, okay, prevents any air getting introduced into the um, potometer when you're using it. Um, okay, so that's the, the setup uh, of a potometer. And now we're going to look at uh, how we actually use it to uh, measure the transpiration uh, rate. Okay, so uh, what exactly does a potometer uh, measure? Well, we've been saying that uh, it measures uh, the rate of transpiration. Uh, that's not strictly true. Uh, and I need to explain uh, why. Uh, if you remember what transpiration is, uh, it's the loss of uh, water from the stomata of the leaf, like that. Okay, so there's the water uh, diffusing out of the stomata of the leaf. Now, uh, as that happens, uh, water is going to be pulled through the plant and therefore through the potometer. So you get the movement of water up like that. Now, um, what actually happens when water is moving through the plant, not all of the water will be lost by transpiration. Some of the water is going to be used by the plant. So, for example, it'll be needed uh, for photosynthesis. Uh, it'll be needed uh, to do some reactions like hydrolysis reactions. Uh, the other thing it's going to be needed for uh, is to make the plant cells uh, turgid uh, to provide support. So not all of the water that leaves the plant is able to be measured by the potometer because some of the water is used in these processes plus others uh, as well. So what exactly uh, does it measure? Well, it actually measures the volume of water. Volume of water uptake uh, by the plant. So it's not the loss of water from the leaf, i.e. transpiration. It's the volume of water uptake. 
Now, uh, how is that measured? Well, this is where the capillary tube comes in and the bubble and the measuring scale. Um, you, to calculate volume of that capillary tube, uh, you use the equation volume is equal to pi r squared uh, times h. h is the distance the bubble moves uh, along the capillary tube. Uh, the radius would be the radius of the uh, capillary tube there. So that's what it actually measures. Now the units uh, of uh, volume would be uh, centimetres cubed uh, or millimetres cubed. Okay, so they're the, the, the standard units uh, of volume. Okay, so um, the other thing that we can calculate is actually the volume of, uh, sorry, the, the rate of uptake of water. So that will involve uh, using the volume that you've calculated with the above equation and dividing that by time. So you measure the distance the bubble moved in a given time and you calculate the volume and then divide by the time. So that will be the, um, the rate of volume of water uptake uh, by the plant. Now, the, the units of that are going to combine volume with, with time. So you could have centimetres cubed uh, per minute uh, is a typical um, unit for this. You could have centimetres cubed per second, all right, even per hour. OK, so... Um, it's always volume with time. So I've used centimetres cubed there, uh, but of course the um, volume could be millimetres cubed and you could have millimetres cubed per minute. Okay, so there's a whole sort of range of units that you can use which are uh, listed in, uh, in the notes. Um, so that's actually what a potometer uh, measures. OK, so you may get asked about that and you may need to explain why the potometer doesn't actually measure transpiration technically. Uh, it measures the, uh, the volume of water uptake, which then can be converted into rate if you measure the time over which the bubble moved. OK, so that's the um, potometer and what it measures. Now we're going to look at how we actually uh, use it to uh, measure the effect of, for example, wind speed on the rate of uh, volume uptake. OK, so what you can see now are, uh, or is a full description of how you would uh, set up a potometer and use it to measure the rate of transpiration or as we've said previously, uh, the the volume uptake or the rate of volume uptake. Okay, so uh, we're going to take the assumption now that we're going to measure uh, or change the air speed um, to see how that affects the rate of transpiration. So you set up your potometer as we described previously, uh, where it's all done underwater. <coughs> Um, the independent variable, as we've said, is airspeed. And the dependent variable is going to be the distance the bubble moves in one minute. Because we want to be able to calculate rate. So we need uh, a time that we measure the movement of the bubble. Okay. Um, as this is an experiment, you can see point number four. You should always mention several control variables. OK, so examples would be the same species of plant, same number of leaves on the, uh, the cut stem, uh, same leaf surface area. And then the others would be all the other factors that affect rate of transpiration. You'd need to keep all of those uh, constant as well. So um, the best way to change airspeed is to use uh, a fan. Now, uh, the fan could have a variable speed on it, so that could change the wind speed. Um, if it doesn't, um, you could actually move 
the fan so that little box is the fan um, this is the uh, the cut stem in the potometer so you could move the distance away from the cut stem to affect uh, the wind speed okay so there's two ways that you could actually do this one is have a variable controlled fan and the other one is to have the fan spinning at a constant speed but uh, move the dis increase the distance away from the plant okay so that's how you'd set up uh, the fan uh, you'd need to make sure now that your air bubble uh, in the capillary tube is set to zero okay and the way to do that is to open the reservoir uh, with the tap to let a little bit of water into the capillary tube and that then will move the bubble backwards uh, to zero okay um, so what you do then is you turn the fan on uh, you measure the distance moved in a minute okay you stop you reset the bubble back to zero and then you do uh, two other repeats for the same fan speed or for the same distance okay and from that you can calculate uh, the volume um, you can calculate the mean volume um, and then you can uh, calculate uh, the rate by dividing volume uh, by time so that's the uh, uh, the, the way you use the photometer, uh, how you set it up, what you control uh, to look at um, the effect of uh, wind speed. Okay, but remember, you could be asked to explain how you do one for humidity, temperature, and light intensity. But I think airspeed is the most common one uh, to be asked to do. Okay, so that's how we use a photometer uh, to measure rate of transpiration or really the rate of volume uptake.